Hey colleagues, welcome back to the office. It's Steve. Welcome to our podcast for today. This is Excel Pivot Tables for Accountants and Financial Professionals, part one. Thank you so much for joining us. We have an action-packed podcast for you today. Lots of useful information in and around one of our absolute favorite tools inside of Excel, which are pivot tables. Pivot tables, if you're not familiar with them, they are the absolute easiest way to be able to monitor and update and analyze your data in a very clean and concise format. They are an indispensable tool for all different types of financial professionals, from CPAs, bookkeepers, tax professionals, to just about any aspect of business, including payroll, um, anybody doing any sort of analytics, uh, even people maybe working in constructions that need to manage maybe cost flow, uh, cost and, and uh, status of projects, or uh, really kind of anybody that needs to take data and calculate it in a meaningful way and do things like summing, counting, or anything else like that, a pivot table is your miracle object. It does the analysis that can absolutely be done normally inside of Excel, but it does it like this. It just does it in a general uh, snap. And what's beautiful about a pivot table is that you can reorganize that table to be anything that you'd like it to be. Uh, so you could put any header, any any footer, you could put anything into the x-axis, anything into the y-axis, you can filter, rearrange your data any way that you'd like. And in my opinion, it is probably one of the first of the more advanced capabilities that I think everybody should learn how to do. You know, if you're on your way to becoming a Excel power user, an advanced user of Excel, uh, pivot tables are absolutely a stop on that journey. They are, in my opinion, probably the most commonly used method of analysis and analytics inside of Excel. And so, in this series, we are going to explore the different things that we can do with a pivot table. And in today's presentation, we're going to introduce these topics for you. Uh, we'll talk about the different ways that they're utilized in accounting, as well as other business professionals might find them useful. We're going to talk about the six main components of a pivot table, uh, the filters, the rows, the values, the columns. Uh, we're going to create a couple of examples of pivot tables as well. And we're going to talk about some different ways that we can group and organize both our row and column data. I'll also show you a couple of basic sort options and some different ways that you can update your pivot tables utilizing my sef second favorite functionality inside of Excel, which are tables. Uh, tables and pivot tables, mwah, they're a match made in heaven. They are a great way of being able to organize uh, your information. And when you pair them together, they just work really, 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 really well. All right. So majority of our presentation today is going to be directly inside of Excel. So uh, let's just go ahead and hop to it and get started with our presentation for today. Now, the first thing I want to do is I want to just help you identify what a pivot table looks like and some of the main components that go into it. So you can have a general appreciation for what they are and the way that they are utilized. OK, a pivot table is always going to look like this. Um, there's going to be an X axis. There's going to be a Y axis and data will be displayed in the middle of there. And the reason we call them a pivot table is the fact that they can pivot very quickly, very easily from one direction or the other. Uh, so we can, for example, automatically readjust our um, our layout so that if we want to see things that were on the X axis and move them to the Y axis, we can go ahead and do that. Uh, if we want to switch our Y to the X, if we want to change how a calculation occurs, you know, let's say by default it is summing things, but instead we want to count them. Great, we can do that. Okay, but this is generally what you can come to expect with a pivot table. Now, I've labeled the main components of this. Our first one up here, this is going to be our filter. Okay, the filter is the macro level um, gatekeeper of what is included or excluded in the scope of that pivot table. Okay, now by default, uh, it's going to include everything, but if you'd like to filter down maybe to a specific business unit or department or division of the company or general account, something of that nature, that's when you're going to want to use a filter. And it's going to gatekeep everything that will ultimately end up over here, ultimately end up inside of our analysis. And so it's a great way of pre-filtering. And we can still do filters in other parts of the pivot table as well. But it's the great way of being able to pre-filter our data 
for analysis. Now you'll notice you get your filter up here, but then you also have filter buttons throughout this as well on your X and Y axis. So that's not the only place you could filter, but it is going to control whatever ultimately ends up in that pivot table itself. Okay, so we have our values. Okay, our values are going to be ultimately the information in the meat of the report itself. And so the values are going to be what is actually calculated. Now, the default action inside of a pivot table is going to be to sum things up if it's numeric. Uh, so if I had a bunch of just general account information, you know, sales, expenses, payroll entries, things of this nature, we're going to see those values by default added up and summed. However, that is not the whole story. Um, we can do a variety of other arithmetic operations, including counting. We can calculate variance, standard deviation, um, and there's others as well. Pretty much anything that's included in the subtotal functionality is going to be an operation that we can choose to do inside of our pivot table. And the values are going to be what actually is calculated inside of this. Okay. Now we have our columns. Okay. Columns are going to be controlling the X axis, what goes across. Uh, so we can choose to divide and kind of summarize our data in whatever way that makes sense to us. But whatever we want to see horizontally on our spreadsheet, that is going to be what goes to our columns section. Now, as a matter of best practices, something I personally recommend, I personally prefer my reporting to go long, meaning I don't care if it goes to a second or third page down, but generally I want it to be one page wide. I find that to be easier to analyze in the scope of uh, the report that I'm working on. Okay, so things that I find to work really well for columns would be time. So month, quarter, year, generally it's going to be a more defined period. And so whatever I have less of so that it doesn't go over into another sheet to the right, I will generally want to put into that columns section and analyze over in that way. Okay. Now we have rows. Rows are here. This controls what is in that Y axis. So what goes down uh, will be what we would put here. So if we got a lot of accounts, if we have a lot of salespeople, if we have a lot of departments or, or locations for our business, the quantity of things, that's generally what I'm going to want to put in that Y axis to go down in that area. Okay. And so these are our main sections with respect to creating a pivot table. And these are going to be controlled using the items list. And where we put things from one place to the other is going to be uh, where those items will pop up. So if we put something to rows, guess what? They're going to go to the Y axis. We put something to columns. It's going to go to the X axis. So let's go over, let's go ahead and switch over and take a look at what this looks like inside of Excel. And so I'm running just a modern version of Excel here. Nothing fancy. This is as bare bones as you could possibly get. And uh, I'm going to introduce and go through all the various aspects of a pivot table here in a minute, but let's just orientate ourselves and find up from down inside of this pivot table. Now, the data that we are looking here is general sales data. So uh, let Let's just say we're running a restaurant here, Steve's Sandwich Shop in Big Bear Lake, California. And I've got different items that I want to be able to quantify to understand. You know, my uh, my shop sells beverages, we sell food, but we also have other things as well that we need to take into consideration to maybe get a sense of our expenses. Uh, so certainly we have our food costs, but we also have insurance, we have payroll, rent, other things of this nature. And what's fabulous about this pivot table is the fact that this is so well organized. Um, let me show you what the underlying raw data looks like so you can have an appreciation for what this would do. Okay. Now, generally, when we're working with pivot table data, this is what that underlying raw data would look like. It's just a summary of transactions. In this case, we're looking at checks. So we could see our dates, we could see our check numbers, our amounts, our vendors and food. And you know what? There's a lot of things that we could do to be able to summarize this directly inside of Excel. You know, as an example here, we could do a very simple sum if formula. Let's say we just wanted to summarize our food and beverages as an example here. Okay. Well, we can come on over here and we can write our sum if, and I'm going to be a little lazy. I'm going to sum the whole columns just to make it a little bit easier. So with our sum if formula, we can go ahead and we can choose our range. In this case, it would be column E here. Okay. Our criteria would be over here on G2 and our sum range would be over here under our amount. And if we do that, we would see 
that we get our sum for our food and for our beverages. And so we can see here over time, you know, so it's not that you can't do these type of operations without a pivot table, you can do them. You're just going to end up writing a lot of formulas. And in fact, if we think about this, those numbers aren't really meaningful. They're not really helpful in any respect. That 288.391 for the food, for example, is over the entirety of this data set. And if we look over here, we have a total of 431 records, probably going over the course of the whole year. Now, as a business owner, I want real-time information. I want to get this information as quick and easy as I can. Well, without having to write a whole bunch of formulas and a lot of some ifs and then taking into account time and then what happens if my criteria changes, well, that's where pivot tables can be really useful. They take the data that we already have and they make it in a more usable format for us to be able to calculate and understand. It takes data that would traditionally just be ledger data, as we can see here, and it processes it in a very meaningful way that we can break it down by the categories or time or department department or location or person, whatever we choose to do in a more meaningful way. Okay. So this is essentially a very good example of your most generic or basic of pivot tables. So let's review what those six aspects of those pivot tables were. Again, what we have here in those six aspects, we have our filters, we have our columns and rows. Let's take a look at what those are in real life. So up top here is our filter. Over here, these are going to be our columns controlling that X axis. Over here is going to be our rows in our Y axis. And then we ultimately have our data listed. So this is what you can come to expect with the pivot table. Now, the pivot table goes hand in hand with the pivot table field list. Let me just go ahead and clear all these items out just so you can kind of get a sense of the most basic of basic of what this pivot table looks like. OK, so when you go to create a pivot table, we're going to create some here just in a few minutes. Uh, this is kind of your first generic layout. You'll notice it's just 100 percent a white screen here. But we have this area letting us know that, hey, a pivot table is supposed to make its appearance here. OK, well, we have our pivot table field list and you'll notice we've got date, check number, amount, vendor and account. Let's go ahead and switch back over here to our raw data for figure one. OK. So you'll see we have data, check number, amount, vendor, and account. Okay. Those headers are absolutely the same headers that are listed in this pivot table. And what we want to do with the pivot table is we want to be able to arrange this data in a meaningful way that makes sense to us. You know, so let's say, for example, I want to analyze, I want to analyze the account then by vendor and then by amount over time. Okay. So as an example here, we'll pull our account down here to rows and you'll notice it starts to populate. And what we're seeing over here on the right hand side is a unique listing of those values in that specific uh, report. You know, we see a unique listing of those accounts, no matter how many times they occur. OK, if we look at it back over here at our raw data, you'll see they all appear several times. The pivot table is always going to pull just a unique list. OK, now let's say we wanted to be able to understand this by vendor. Well, we'll pull our vendor down over here to our account. And we're going to go ahead and put that under that item. And you'll start to see here it starts to differentiate beverages, wholesale beverage, food. We have multiple vendors for food. Likewise, for um, other aspects of this, you would see additional vendors as they pop up. OK, let's pull our amount and let me just go ahead and drop my camera here just for a second, just so you can see the rest of this. Okay. Oops, wrong one. Okay. And we will go ahead and we will pull our amount down over here to our values. And in doing so, we will start to see that calculation pop up. Uh, we will start to see, for example, this pivot table start to populate with additional fields of data where it is useful and helpful. Uh, and so we can start to see, for example, how much we spent with each of these vendors. And we can start to see how much we're spending at each category. Okay, we can also pull, for example, our date. If we pull our date and we pull our date up here to our columns, 
Okay, what we can see here if we pull our date field over here to our columns is that we'll start to see this breakdown by date as well. And so we could see here by category and by vendor, we can see the different amounts that we have spent with subtotals. Okay, so that's generally what we would expect from a pivot table. Now, what's amazing with a pivot table is the fact on a dime, we can go ahead and we can readjust this pivot table to get it to a more precise view of what we would like it to be. You know, let's say, for example, I actually don't want to see it by account and vendor. Maybe I just want to see it by vendor. Well, we could just immediately drag our account out and voila, there you go. We just see it by uh, vendor date and the sum of the value. You know what? Maybe I want to see it not by date, but by vendor and account. Well, we can go ahead and keep our vendor listed here and we'll pull our account over here to our columns. And guess what? We've got that different view. Okay. What's beautiful about a pivot table is the fact that it can adjust on a dime with respect to where these data can be. We can pivot it to get it to what we would like. And it's really just a matter of pulling the different aspects of this report to the area that we would like to see it represented. So that's all we're doing when we're creating a pivot table is that we are just moving things from one place to the other to ultimately get the analysis or report that we would like. Okay, let's uh, let's go ahead and pull our date back here. And I want to show you one other aspect, just getting into pivot tables, why I love them so much. Okay, so what we have here is we have a listing of our um, transactions by vendor by time. Okay, now what's really kind of cool with respect to our pivot table is the fact that we can double click on any of these numbers and we can immediately get a transaction log of how that number was calculated. Okay, so let's say I'm doing my analysis here and you know what I'm looking and I'm seeing, for example, this farmer's produce, we spent $43,141.48. You know what, I'd really like to see what line items are included inside of that. Well, what's beautiful about a pivot table is that we can do that very quickly and easily. All we have to do with the pivot table is just double click it. And when we double click it, it will produce another worksheet giving us an outline of how that number was derived. So if we look at figure one here, that was 43,141. And if we come back over here to sheet one and we just do a quick total on all of this, and we could see that by just highlighting the data that we'd like. And then down here, we'll see the average, the count and the sum. We'll see that sum is in fact 43,141. And if I zoom in, uh, it's a little too low down. Unfortunately, I can't. Uh, we will see that that is in fact the same number. And so it's a great way of being able to kind of do that kind of detailed analysis of what you're looking for without having to do a lot of formulas and calculations themselves. Uh, I like to say they're the easy button for being able to analyze and sort through your data. Uh, they really are compelling and powerful, and there's a lot of really useful things that we can do uh, with it. All right, let's go ahead and have our first polling question for our class today and our first review question. All righty. So what is the main purpose of utilizing a pivot table? So why would you want to use a pivot table? Okay. Uh, as a necessary component of creating charts and graphs, no, you can make a chart and graph kind of with anything inside of Excel. A pivot table makes it easier. And in fact, with inside of pivot tables, we have this other capability called a pivot chart, which is the easy button for creating charts. We'll talk about that in a future podcast, but uh, you do not need to create a pivot table to create a chart and graph. Okay. Is it to remove duplicates from your data? No, no, you can. And in fact, it's great because it's going to sum those things together. But ideally, if you're working with raw data, you want to remove total duplicates no matter what, uh, because it is uh, ultimately going to uh, double count your data. You know, imagine if you had a sales transaction log and you were double counting sales. Well, sales are going to be overstated because of that. Uh, is it to summarize and analyze large amounts of data efficiently and effectively? You know what? That sounds pretty accurate. That's what I would recommend it to be as well. Uh, and would it be to apply conditional formatting? No, you can apply conditional formatting on your own with really kind of any, you no know, additional uh, options there. You can just kind of do it on your own without, uh, without having to add a pivot table to it. Now I will say doing conditional formatting in a pivot table is awesome uh, because it really helps your data pop. And ultimately inside of Excel, what we're trying to do here is layer our information and we're trying to understand how it all comes together 
And a pivot table is a really efficient way of doing that. Now, I do want to remind you that if you are a financial professional, and I hope you are, that listening to today's podcast, whether you're listening after the fact or if you're watching live today, and we do broadcast twice a week, usually on Tuesdays and Fridays at 11 a.m., and you're always welcome to come to our live presentations and ask questions questions. But regardless of when you're watching, if you are a CPA, you're an enrolled agent uh, or uh, some other sort of financial professional, guess what? You can earn credits for listening to today's podcast and learning with us. It's super simple and easy. Head on over to cpetoday.com. Use course code PVT1. Again, that is cpetoday.com. Use course code PVT1. Take a quick five question exam and you can earn a credit to continue your education and to maintain your license. So please, this is a great, fast, efficient, and affordable way of maintaining your license. Go ahead and check out again, cpetoday.com. Use course code PVT1 one, and you will earn a credit for today's class. All righty, let's go ahead and switch back and continue our discussion. And let's talk about like kind of the, the, um, getting started with pivot tables and what that means to kind of, you know, get our data formatted and organized. And I'd like to give you some best practices and recommendations in terms of what you might want to structure. Okay. So here is an example of just a generic pivot uh, table data. You know, if I were just to get started again, and this is the same data that we were working with just a minute ago. Okay. Now, ultimately, when I'm getting started, there are some best practices with getting our data arranged and organized. Okay. So when I talk about getting our data arranged and organized, what I'm trying to do are a couple of big things. Okay. Now, the first thing that I want my data to be is ideally organized in kind of like a quasi database format. And what I mean by this is that there's a general way that data should be analyzed and there's kind of some best practices and the pivot table itself is expecting the data to be in a specific format. Uh, and that format just so happens to be very similar to how databases would organize data. Okay. Now, what do I mean by this? Now, ultimately what we're trying to follow here is what I call the tabular data method, the tabular data model and tables and pivot tables go hand in hand with each other. They're not the same thing. And in fact, when you go to create your pivot table, I would highly recommend that you create a table first. It's gonna flesh out any issues, any inconsistencies, any structural problems. And in fact, it is gonna make your pivot table operations better in every possible way. And we're gonna explore that here in a moment. But here are some best practices with respect to getting your data organized. So first and foremost, what I want is I ideally want my data to be long, not wide. Um, and what I mean by that is that we want our data to kind of follow the methodology for each row represents a transaction or something that I'm summarizing. Uh, in this particular instance, what we are looking at here is that we are looking at a summary of our checks by account vendor and category. Okay. With each row representing a check. And that's ultimately the methodology that we want to have, which each row represent a check. Now, the opposite of this would be where if the data was transposed, you know, where each column represented a check. Now, most of you are probably rolling your eyes to begin with. You'd probably never uh, would uh, set it up that way, but just being on the same page and being consistent, make your data long, don't make it wide. Okay. The next thing is that we want our data to ultimately be congruent. We want everything to touch everything else. That's going to make life a lot faster and easier. When we go to create our table or we go to create our pivot table, the software is going to determine where that data starts and stops. So if we, for example, had empty rows, empty columns, and we go to create this, you'll notice that as it goes to create this data, it is going to do it not in the full data set, but rather where it sees the breaks. So if you make your data congruent, if you make everything touch, when you go to create that pivot table or table, 
it's going to know exactly where that data starts and stops. And so in this case, we'll see here, figure two, A1 to E431, that is in fact where our data lives. That is correct. So if you are exporting data, and this is really reflective of uh, coming out of accounting systems, general ledger packages, things of this nature, where you have a lot of extra formatting. One of the best things that I always recommend that you do, you get your data inside of Excel, come on over here to the home tab and just go ahead and remove any excess formatting. You know, so as an example for here, we're going to go ahead and just dump our formats. There's nothing in there to begin with, but if we did see it, we'd see any styling or any mumbo jumbo removed. And as another component of this, we'd also want to completely remove any completely blank columns or rows. Now, let's say, for example, we don't have a name for something, you know, let's say we're missing a cell. That's not a problem. That's not going to cause you any issues. But what we do want to avoid are just completely blank rows and completely blank columns. Um, when you go to do your reporting, you're going to see those blank columns pop up and it's just not going to be effective. That's not what the software is looking for. Okay. Now the next best practice is you want to make sure that you have a header row. Header rows are so important. And I honestly cannot think of a single example where a header row would not make your analysis more effective. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and say it is a default option. When you go to create the pivot table, when you go to create the table itself, it'll ask you, you know, Hey, does your row have headers? You'll, as you can see here, when we go to create our table, uh, and technically you could say, no, it doesn't contain headers, you know, and, and do it this way. But what you're ultimately going to end up with is a header row, no matter what. And it's going to say column one, two, three, four, and five. Um, you know, so if you were to go do your pivot table from this, let's just go ahead and continue. This as an example here. You're going to see on the right hand side that in fact, it says columns one, two, three, four, and five. And, uh, I don't know about you, but my short term memory isn't great. So I don't really remember, uh, what columns two, three, four, and five are. So generally I would tell you, you should, um, avoid, and you should avoid having, um, uh, not having a header row, you should absolutely create one yourself and just go ahead and do it. Uh, let me just go ahead and step us back here just a little bit and take us back to square one. And let's talk about tables just for a second. Okay. So I'm just taking us back here to square one and I'm just resetting, removing that formatting. You saw how I did that by coming over here to the home menu and then selecting clear format. Okay. All righty. All right. So we're back to square one here. All right, so the best practices that we've identified thus far would be, first and foremost, make sure your data is congruent. Second, make sure that uh, you've removed any completely blank columns and rows. Uh, third would be to ensure that you've got a header row. Now, my fourth best practice with respect to creating a pivot table is a small one, but in my opinion is very important. And I'm going to go ahead and say, this is a rule. This is something you should absolutely do here. You want to make a table from your data and then create a pivot table from it for a lot of different reasons. Okay. Now a table is a container of data inside of Excel. Now I've done a course, actually we've done two podcasts thus far. And again, I'd recommend you check out cpetoday.com and you could watch for free our class on tables and data modeling. And we've gone through tables extensively and we're going to continue to discuss tables extensively because there's such a critical component of Excel, but a table and a pivot table are just a match made in heaven. They work so efficiently and well with each each other. So a table is a container of data and it adds kind of a wrapper to your information. And then when you go to create your pivot table, you're not creating your pivot table from the raw data, but you're creating it from the table instead. Now this is a small, but important distinction. If it's in the scope of the table, it's in the scope of the pivot table. Now, this is especially useful for two scenarios. The first would be if you've got a dynamic data set. Okay, let's just go ahead and not create a table and let's just create a pivot table from this just so you can kind of understand what I'm talking about. So with our raw data here, we're going to come over here and we're going to select pivot table and we're going to click OK. And let's just go ahead and drag our amounts down to values. We'll pull our vendors over here to rows and we'll pull our date over here to columns. Okay. Now let's say, for example, we add additional data time marches on. We've added new records for this and I want to go and update it. 
Well, what I have to do if I have not created a table from my data is come over here to change data source. And you'll notice that there is an absolute reference here. We can see, for example, that it is referencing A12431. Well, that would mean that I would have to come down here, add my new data. Come on, there we go. And I would have to tell it, you know what? Don't go to row 431, go to row 430 two in order to be able to include that new row in that record. Okay. So with a pivot table, if we don't create a table, if we expect our data set to grow, we have to redefine the data source by coming up to our pivot table, analyze and selecting change data source. So we don't want to do that. So as a best practice though, if we instead create a table, and then from that table, we create our pivot table. We're going to save ourselves a step in the future if that data set is going to grow. Okay. So let's go ahead and create our table first. And we're going to do so by coming up here to the insert menu. And from that insert menu, we are going to go ahead and select a uh, table. Okay. And it's going to ask us, where's the table start and stop? In this case, A1 to 431. And we're also going to indicate that our table has headers. And we're going to go ahead and click OK. A dead giveaway that you're working with table data inside of Excel is the fact that they always come pre-styled like this. OK. Now, I'm not going to go into the 100% of the merits of tables. But the one thing you need to know about a table and a pivot table in conjunction with each other is that a pivot table will use the table as a data source and a table is dynamically sized. Meaning if we add a new column over here, let's say, for example, we add a column called tax year. OK, notice that the style extends into that column. OK, let's say we write the formula of year. OK, and we pointed at our check date over here. Notice that when we rank that new field, that column will automatically replicate with the formula contained inside of it. OK, so pivot tables will use the table data. And if new data gets added like a new column or if we come down here and let's just say we add a new row as an example. OK, that new row would automatically be in the scope of the table, which then automatically puts it in the scope of the pivot table. So always consider this a law. When you want to create a pivot table, create a table from your data, then create a pivot table ultimately. So let's go ahead and take a look at creating a just simple pivot table from a table. So we're going to come up here to our insert menu. And from our insert menu, we are going to create our pivot table from this insert menu. And you'll see it listed right there uh, that you can use to create this pivot table. Okay. Now I do want to draw your attention to recommended pivot tables too. If you're just getting started and you want to find some different ways that you can organize your data and you don't know exactly how to use a pivot table just yet. One of the cool things about recommended pivot tables is that it will give you some examples of what your data could look like. It will scan your data and will give you some examples of how to use it. So for example, here we can see some by account by vendor, some by amount by account, so on and so forth. But it's a great way to just to get started with our pivot table. Okay, so let's just create a normal pivot table. And again, that's going to be from the insert menu, pivot table on the left, and here we go. Okay. Now, what I want you to notice here when we go to create our pivot table, a couple of important things. Notice that when we create it from a table, it has the name of the table, table two in this particular example. Uh, if we want a more meaningful name, if we just back out a little bit and come over to our table design menu and instead select uh, check register and give it the name of check register, we can do so in the upper left hand corner of that table design menu. So I can give it the name of check register. And in fact, from a table's best practice, you should always give it a fairly uh, representative name. OK, and also from that table design, you'll notice we even have a shortcut here. Ooh, secret shortcut in terms of uh, what you can create your pivot table right here as well. And you'll notice when we give it a better name instead of table two, you'll see check register is what pops up. OK, again, anything in the scope of that check register table will now be in the scope of that pivot table. OK, we can connect our pivot table to an external data source. We'll talk about late, that later on, as well as use the workbooks data model. And you'll even notice down here at the bottom of the pivot table, there's a checkbox that says use the data model, use this data in the data model or add it to the data model. More on that. And in fact, if you watch our tables course, 
we're going to discuss that in depth because data modeling in Excel, it's so wonderful and works so efficiently. But we're going to just create a good old generic pivot table just using our table data. And we're going to go ahead and click OK here. So there you go. That is what it looks like to ultimately just create a simple pivot table from data. OK, we turn our data into a table and then we organize it. Um, we Then we take that table data and we turn it into a pivot table. OK, so with respect to this, I'm just going to make this big just to make it a little bit easier for everybody to see here. Now we have our pivot table fields. So we can ultimately just put this data anywhere, anywhere that we would like it to be. Let's say, for example, and we're going to pull our amount down here to our values. And I just want to draw your attention as you start to pull these different fields out, you'll start to see those calculations occur immediately. And so right now you'll see, I just pulled that sum of amount down to values and you'll see we have the number uh, 778, 827. That's just the sum of everything. As we start to pull the other columns to where we would like them to appear, either to the x-axis or to the y-axis or as a filter, we will start to see this pivot table be built out. So as an example here, let's pull our account over here to our filter. Okay, if we scroll up a little bit, we'll see this here. And if we start to filter, maybe for example, just to beverages as an example here, we'll start to see those numbers calculate. Let's pull our date over here to our columns. And let's go ahead and pull our vendor down here to our rows. And we'll make this a little bit bigger. You'll start to see this data work out. Okay. Now, let me show you something else that's really kind of cool with respect to the pivot tables. Okay. Let's, uh, let's pull our account now down here to our vendors. Okay. And there we go. Okay. Now a couple things with respect to the, um, organization of this pivot table that I think are going to be really useful for you. Okay. There are a couple like navigation things that you should know with respect to your pivot tables. There are two special contextual aware menus that pop up. There's your pivot table analyze, and then is your design. Now the stuff that's all around calculations, that's going to be in your pivot table, analyze contextual aware menu. Uh, this is going to be, for example, where you can give it a name. So if you want to call this check pivot, you can, that will be useful if you're referencing that data anywhere else. Okay. And this is ultimately going to be where you can turn off and on different functionalities and adjust how it's calculated. Uh, if you want to add a slicer to be able to better filter your data, you can do that. Likewise with the timeline. Uh, if you want to update your data, if it's coming from a uh, table and new data gets added, guess what? All you have to do is hit that refresh and it will go back to that table and any new data that's been added to that table will automatically get added here as well. This is ultimately where we can create calculations. We're going to cover this in a future podcast specifically on pivot tables, but calculations are so useful. It allows us to be able to do a calculation of something that would uh, otherwise not be possible. It can take data in this and create a new value for us. Now, an important thing and kind of speaking with this as well, pivot tables are only ever aware of what's inside of a pivot table. You can't, for example, do a V lookup or uh, some sort of external calculation. So when we use calculated fields and calculated items, we're using it in such a way to be able to create a derivative number based off of data already inside of this worksheet. So it's a great way of being able to create a, a new calculation. And we will cover this in depth in terms of some of the more advanced things that you can use inside of this. And this is ultimately where we can go and grab our field list if we want to rearrange, for example, our data into something else. So if we want to, for example, maybe pull our months out here and maybe just pull our tax year, uh, this would be how we can turn things off and on. Okay. Now from the design tab, this is going to control how the pivot table looks. Okay. Now up here, you'll notice we've got in our design tab, uh, first and foremost, we've got our colors. We can choose whatever visual appearance we would like this to be. Uh, so if we want to go with a nice blue or purple, we can go ahead and do that. Okay. This is ultimately going to be where we can turn off and on all the visualization. So if we want to have a row header and stylize it that way, or our column header, we can do it that way. We can do banded columns as well as banded rows. And we can also 
discuss, uh, change how some of the items are totaled and appear. Uh, for example, we can turn off and on our subtotals. You know, right now the data is kind of um, repetitive if we were to have subtotals on because there's not a lot. That's where we can do this. And we can also turn off and on our grand totals, which are useful if we're totaling across a larger period of time. We can also adjust the reporting layout, right? Default, we're seeing it in the compact layout, but if we wanted to switch to our layout for our uh, uh, outline or the tabular format, we can do that. There are three different layouts with respect to pivot tables with compact being the standard. And we can also insert blank rows if we want to provide a little bit more separation in our data. Now, additionally, inside of this, we can adjust anything that we would see on the home tab. So if we want to adjust the number formatting as an example here, maybe we want to put it all into the comma style, the accounting format, we can do that. But just be aware that if you do select that, it will adjust everything, including things that maybe you don't want it to be. So sometimes you need to be a little bit specific. Now, in future podcasts, we are going to go very deep with respect to how to stylize and format your data and different visual ways that you can do it. I'm just trying to give you a general sense of what's available at the moment. So let's just go ahead and put this into a little bit more usable format. And let's just go ahead and remove our blank rows here. And the next thing I want to talk about would be grouping our data. Now, one of the really cool things that we can do inside of Excel is that we can group our pivot table data to make it more sense for us. Now, in this example, what we're looking at here is we're looking at restaurant data. Well, really, I want to see direct costs like food and beverage, and then I ultimately want to see our uh, overhead in two separate categories. Well, a couple things that we can do. We can readjust the order of the data presented in here by coming over to the left-hand side of this cell. You'll see that it's active in green. I can pick this stuff up and I can rearrange the order of this any way I would like it to be, you know, so I can put this in whatever order I would like. Okay. Additionally, what I can do is I can also group this data together. Okay. So let's say, for example, I want to group my food and beverage. I'm going to move beverages down here just so you don't see them right next to each other. And I want to create a group that just pulls our food and beverage into one group. Okay, so I'm going to highlight this. I'm going to hold down the control key and I'm going to hit beverages. I'm going to right click and I'm going to go ahead and select group from this menu and watch what happens. Notice it creates a new group, group one for food and beverages, putting those, and then we will see our other items listed as well. Now, the only downside of grouping stuff when you're in the vertical uh, row layout like this is that if you group one thing, you got to group everything. So very quickly, let's go ahead and move our payroll expense, insurance, rent, supplies, and utility. And let's just go ahead and put them into their own group. And we'll call that group overhead. So we'll select these items here, highlighting them, right-clicking, selecting group. And you'll see now that we have two listings of our groups. And so we can come up here to group one and we can say direct costs. And we'll come down here to group two and we will say overhead like that. And let me just go ahead and remove our second field listing. Okay, so let's just remove our account listing here, just so you can kind of see it even cleaner. Here are our direct costs by vendor, and here are our overhead costs. Now, one of the other cool things that you can do with uh, grouping is you can do it by time as well. Okay, let's pull our date from, uh, let's go ahead and pull our date down here to our columns. Okay. And in doing so, you'll notice that automatically it goes to a time-based date layout. We'll see here, for example, it is going by month. If we right click, and it's important you do this in the right place. If we come up here and we right click on where it says Jan, Feb, March, so on and so forth, you'll notice we also have our group and ungroup options listed. Let me just go ahead and ungroup this just so you can see it. And let's just take this row here and let's put it into short date format just so you can see the actual date. You'll see that it is now just grouped by day. And this is how pivot tables always used to work. We had to create lookup formulas and compound formulas to be able to group, you know, by time inside of Excel. Well, thankfully that's been fixed in Excel 2016 forward. We can come over here to our columns and we can right click on a date as an example here and select group, and it will give us the option to be able to group based off of time automatically. And so we can do it all the way from seconds to years, depending on what we are looking for. And so let's say, for example, I wanted to do it months, quarters, and years. So we're going to select all three of those. And we'll click OK. 
you'll see here it creates groupings for each of these. And so we can see our quarter one, January, February, March, quarter two, April, May, June. And what I can do is I can collapse these different fields if I don't want to look at them, you know, or I can collapse them all down here and just see it based off of quarter. Or if I collapse the year, I can see it based off of just the year. But it's really cool with respect to how you can group your data to get the level of um, organization that you're looking for. Uh, and this is going to be something that I use quite often with respect to kind of getting my data in a format that is usable for me. Alrighty. So using that custom grouping allows you to be able to kind of organize it in a way that makes sense. And it might be different every single time you do it. Um, and it might be different depending on what analysis you're going for. Sometimes it makes sense to maybe analyze it by vendor. Maybe it makes sense to analyze it by client or by payroll line item or division or department. Well, utilizing a custom group or inside of a pivot table gives you that kind of flexibility and functionality. Okay, let's go ahead and have our second review question for the day. Alrighty, which of the following is not a grouping option inside of a pivot table? Okay, is it custom grouping of the user's choice? You can do that, okay? Uh, you can create whatever custom groups you'd like. You can call them whatever you'd like. Um, that is something you can totally do. But the one caveat I will point out, the second you group one thing, you have to group everything. It's going to put them all into a second level of organization. So having a second uh, or so by creating your own custom group, you're going to have to create groups for everything. And you can create groups inside of groups too. So you can create whatever level of organization you'd like. Can you do it by calendar? Yes, you can do that. So you can group, it's really smart with respect. You can do this both by calendar year as calendar day, calendar month, um, calendar quarter. Excel, unfortunately, that's where it kind of ends. It only knows because calendar is universal. It knows everybody's, you know, understands the January 1st and the December 31st, but can you do it by fiscal year? No, you can't do that. That is the one thing. And that is actually the correct answer here, but you cannot group by fiscal year. What you ultimately need to end up doing is creating a column inside of your raw data that would calculate that fiscal year for you, you know? Uh, so, you know, you could do this through a couple of different ways, a lookup function. You could do a if function to look at the specific date of something. And from there, that is going to be how you can calculate it. So as an example, you know, for our data here, I just use the year function. Okay. But if I wanted to do a calculation for fiscal year, I might do, for example, an if function in here. And so I can say, if the transaction date, let's say is, uh, uh, let's say our calendar year ends June 30th. Okay. Well, if transaction date is July 1st or larger, we'll make that the year plus one if we wanted to, or if it's below June 30th, June 30th or less than June 30th, make it the current fiscal year. And so that's how people generally handle our um, doing fiscal groupings. And then it just becomes a column that you can group on inside of Excel. So that is some of the things that you can do inside of Excel, which make it really cool and useful. Now, some of the other things that you can do inside of Excel that you should be aware of for our pivot tables. And let me just go ahead and pull out our quarters and years, just make this a little bit simpler and easier to read. Okay. Is that we can also sort and filter. Okay. All the sorting and filtering options that are natively available inside of Excel. So up here in our data tab, and what I'm specifically talking about here are these options right in the middle, you know, where we can sort in incrementing or decreasing, uh, decreasing order or put into a specific sort order. Those are all available to us as well. And anywhere that you see a little drop down menu, this will allow you to be able to filter or sort based off of time. So if I want to put this into uh, reverse order, I can go ahead and do though. Okay. If I wanted to, for example, put this and I only wanted to look at my overhead costs, well, I can unselect the other items I don't want to see and just solely focus on that. Likewise, if let's say we only wanted to filter down and see our data, let's say for the fourth quarter. So let's say December, November, and October. Great. That's how we can filter. So we have options to all of this data um, for anything that we might choose to use. Okay, 
Now, one of the other really cool things that we're going to explore this later in as we start to get a little bit more advanced with our pivot tables, but I do want to draw your attention to are the facts that we can do different types of calculations inside of uh, Excel. Okay, so by default, what we see here inside of our Excel items list is that we will see over here under the right hand corner here, our values option, you'll see right now it's set to sum of values. Okay, two different ways that you can change the calculation method. Okay, if we come over here to our pivot table fields list, we can come and click on that sum of values and click on value field setting, and we can adjust what arithmetic operation is being used here. Okay, we can also give it a custom name too. Now by default, since this is just general numbers, we'll see that that default operation is sum. But if instead we wanted to maybe get an average of these fields, okay, we can just go ahead and change that and we will see that that calculation is now showing us an average for that as well. Now we can also right click on this as an example, Okay, and we can also access this over here. So we can choose the summarize values by, and we can choose a different math operation. Okay, your main ones are gonna be adding things together through sum, counting the number of items in that particular list. Uh, we can also get our average, our min, our max product. And if we click more options, you'll see there are more operations, including standard deviation and variance that are listed. But for math, for accounting purposes, general business purposes, I would expect uh, some count and average to be the ones that you would choose to use. So let's switch this back over here to sum and uh, let's go ahead and get rid of our date column now and let's just go ahead and just add back our years. Okay. And we can see here, this is just our general and let's just go ahead and clear our filters and we'll do so by coming up here to the data tab, clicking clear. Okay. And we'll get all of our data back. Now, one of the other things that you can do as well, so you can change the math operation, okay? But again, I want to point out, you can't actually change the numbers themselves. You know, if I go to, for example, change, I can't, you know, change this uh, number listed here. You'll say, hey, we can't change this part of a pivot table. Again, they're read only, okay? Uh, we can also adjust how they are being displayed as well. So there's the math operation that calculates it, but then there's also another math operation of how that number is being displayed. Let me give you a simple example. Let's go ahead and pull our amount again down here to values. And you'll see now that I've got them both listed here. Okay. So we can see sum by amount and we can also see sum by amount too. Your titles inside of a pivot table have to be unique. Well, one of the cool things I can do with this is I can also change the arithmetic op. I can also just uh, change how it's valued and how it's displayed. Okay. If we come over here and we right click on these, you'll see show values as and you have all these other operations, which we're going to discuss in depth in other podcasts, but just to kind of give you a sense, we could, for example, take that sum of value too and show it as a percentage of the grand total. Okay. And in doing so here, we get a sense of, well, how much of my cost is related to my produce? Well, it's 22% for my meat. It's 15%, so on and so forth. Uh, although I will say this number seems quite suspicious if I'm paying my accounting firm 44% of my expenses and that doubled my food cost. But you know, this is a great way of being able to pick out these outliers. And so we can do a percentage of the grand total, a percentage of the column, percentage of the row. We could do, for example, percentage of the parent. And we could choose to do it by vendor or we can choose to do it by uh, whatever we'd like it to be. So like, for example, here, we can get a sense of, and you'll see these numbers total to 100%. So for our direct costs, 49% is our farmer's produce, 33% is our fresh meat. And so again, you can do all of this through normal math operations inside of Excel, but man, does a pivot table make it so easy and efficient. Okay, the last thing I do wanna show you, and we're coming towards the end of our presentation here, just a quick thing for maybe our veteran pivot table users who are maybe feeling for the old way that we used to design pivot tables. And uh, let me just go ahead and clear off our pivot table. Let's just take all these values out. I want to show you the pivot tables option, and we're going to explore all the options in the future, but there is a pivot tables uh, options that you should be aware of where macro controls over how the pivot table is used are kept. 
Okay. And what I'm talking about specifically is the classic layout. A lot of people like the classic layout because you could just drag the fields to where you'd like them to be on the, on the actual pivot table itself. And if you're more of a visual person, maybe this design of pivot tables might be a little bit more effective for you. We'll come on over here to our pivot table, analyze contextual or menu. And on the left-hand side, you'll see our options menu listed here. And this is going to bring up our options with respect to how to create our pivot table. Uh, in fact, you can default a lot of these options now in Excel 2019, which makes it even better for a lot of users. So we're going to come over here and we're going to choose display and we're going to choose this classic pivot table layout. And you'll notice our pivot table layout adjusts now. And what we can do here is we can actually, it's the same calculation, it works the exact same way. But what we can do is we can pick and drag and drop visually where we would like these different fields to appear. So if we want to go in this way, we can go ahead and do that as well. And it will give you that layout. And so, and then we can come up here. Let's choose, uh, oh, what the heck, let's choose our uh, account as our filters. Okay. So if we want to go to our direct cost, great. We can go ahead and do so. So if you're looking for that classic pivot table layout, you can do that very easily inside of Excel by just going into that options menu and enabling that classic layout. All right. Well, that does bring us to the end of our podcast. And uh, before we go, let's go ahead and have our final review question. Okay. Which of the following is not a supported summarization for a pivot table. Okay. So what, what is not an arithmetic operation that we can do? So what, what is not a function we can do on our pivot table data? Uh, can we sum our pivot table? Well, yes, we can sum our pivot table data. So that is not the correct answer. Okay. Can we count it? Yes, we can absolutely count our data inside of our pivot table. Okay, can we do logical functions? Can we do like a VLOOKUP? Can we do an IF? We could do, we do an IFS? Can we do a SWITCH? Can we do a CHOOSE? No, we cannot do that. So that is the correct answer. Pivot table operations are generally just arithmetic operations. So general arithmetic, summing, um, counting, product, standard deviation, variance, average, those are going to be the things you can do. Okay. So could you do a standard deviation? Uh, yes, you could do that as well. Okay. So pivot tables are incredible. They're one of my absolute favorite methods. I would say they are probably my favorite uh, overall tool inside of uh, Excel. And they're the tool I continuously reach for as I'm doing analysis projects, either for my business or for my clients. All right. So what did we discuss today? Well, we gave you a really good introduction to pivot tables, their major uses, best practices with respect to how to design and organize your data effectively, uh, ways of sorting, grouping, and filtering. You know, really any of those sorting and filtering options are going to be present in that data and will be available to you. Now, this is going to be a long series. There is a ton of things that we can discuss and uh, go through with respect to pivot tables. Uh, so in future podcasts, we're going to talk about doing custom calculations. We're going to talk about visualizations, formatting. We'll talk about pivot charts. Uh, we'll also talk about consolidating and analyzing your data. For those power users, we're even going to break into data modeling. I'm going to show you how to create a pivot table from multiple pivot uh, from multiple tables. Uh, this will be particularly useful if you are trying to create a pivot table from two worksheets. You know, if you try to go to create a pivot table from two different sources, you're going to notice you can't do it unless you know my secret trick, which is to use the Excel data model. So more on that in the future. Um, and pivot tables, whether you're this big or you're this big, it's just one of those things that are super, super useful and effective. Now, I do want to remind you, if you are a financial professional, and I hope you are, you can earn credits for listening to today's podcast and webinar. Super simple. Head on over to cpetoday.com. Use course code PVT1. Again, that is cpetoday.com. Use course code PVT1. Take a short five-question exam, and you will earn a credit for today's class, and you'll be well on your way for maintaining your professional licensing. If you like today's content, we'd love to hear from you. We'd love for you to connect with us on social media. You can find us on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, and others. Most social media platforms, you can find us at CPE Today. Uh, please consider leaving us a comment. Or if you're listening on uh, one of our podcast partners, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and others, we'd love for you to leave a review. 
Tell your friends about us. Uh, tell your colleagues about us. Uh, we're hoping to continuously put out new and relevant content to help you be more effective in your career and more effective in your uh, profession, wherever you happen to be operating. Thank you so much for your time and attention today. It is my absolute pleasure, and I hope to see you in another podcast soon. Take care, best wishes, and good luck.